everybody, I'm Andrea Peña from the Repsol Technology Lab in Madrid and I will present this work as a part of the project Digital Reservoir Characterization with Cuttings. In this presentation we will focus on the reservoir petrophysical properties estimation, specifically on porosity from drill cutting using advanced data analytics. In a typical workflow for reservoir characterization, we usually use well log data. And when available, we can study course to do geological description and interpretation. We find the lithology, petrography, the genesis, and among others, we can measure also rock physics properties to calibrate the petrophysical interpretation coming from well logs. As the majority of us know, coring is very expensive. It takes time for operational companies to receive them, so it impacts project cost and time. Coring is also performed in a limited number of wells are and are not taken in development wells. Contrarily, we have our friends, the cuttings, which are widely available, relatively cheap and without that potential as we only use them to obtain a description as a first look and then are usually for guardians once wild and log are taken. With the drill cuttings we see an opportunity to have a complementary analytical approach when well data, core and sidewall cores are not available or achievable. For example, in horizontal wells where we cannot have cores in their sidewall cores or when they cannot be exported from the fields country. Also, we could be able to do fast and low cost subsurface characterization to support coring activities. And lastly, the information obtained from cuttings leads to the possibility of characterizing development wells so they could provide higher quality reservoir models with reduced uncertainty, which could help to optimize development well location. So the important question that led us to execute this work was, can we extract more information from drill cuttings through data analytics? This study proposes the estimation of rock physics properties with the use of advanced data analytics on multi-physics information from drill cuttings. So the aim is to build models that allow the prediction of routine core analysis properties based on more simple information that can be quickly obtained. For instance, from the radioactivity field we can obtain the gamma ray measurements, from the live photography images that can be taken to cuttings, we can derive RGB properties and from the X-ray fluorescence, we can have a compositional analysis. Here, I present a scheme about our approximation to test the hypothesis of predicting rock physics properties from cuttings derived fast properties. What we did was to take cores from different standard sandstones and from them we extract some plugs on which a routine core analysis was carried out, obtaining the porosity as a target data of our multivariate predictive model. On the other hand, artificial cuttings were generated from the plugs with an in-house developed procedures. And as I mentioned before, data from three different fields were obtained, the XRF, RGB and gamma ray. We use this as a training data of our uh, multivariate model. About the available material, our database was made up of three families of clean sandstone. These families were selected according to its permeability. For each family, we had four different sandstone core with different permeabilities and porosities. Five plugs were extracted from each of the cores and then a routine core analysis was done for each plug, so we were able to have the distribution of the porosity for each one of the core. 
This is how the artificial coatings from some Samsung's look alike. X-ray fluorescence and gamma ray were measured in samples like this. And after the processing of these images, RGB photo features were extracted. In a typical workflow for a predictive data analytics application, these basic steps are followed. The data collection, which we have already gone through, the data preparation, in this case combining and preparing data in a convenient format file, then the exploratory data analysis and pre-processing of the data, where we get to know better our data, and in this step is normally done the data reduction, transformation, and filtering engineering. Then it comes to the development of predictive models, where is typically done the model calibration, parameter optimization, and model validation. And we can also iterate between these two phases. Model deployment is a further step we won't talk about. Starting with the exploratory data analysis, here you can see a scatter plot of the hard data. As I mentioned before, in the project database we had three main families. The first one with low permeabilities show in green that ranges from 0.1 to 15 millidarsis. The second family with medium permeabilities shown in blue ranges from 30 to 80 millidarsis and the highest permeability family that ranges from 200 to 4,000 millidarsis. The families were selected based on the permeability because it was expected to be the hardest property to estimate. Regarding the porosity, although there is a partial overlap between the median and high group, the actual structure of the data was captured by unsupervised learning algorithms, so the groups are really different, differentiated by both of the properties. Looking at the porosity histogram, the distribution of the whole data follow a normal behavior. All the skewness seen in the table suggests that the data is fairly symmetrical, so we won't have a bias in the porosity target values. About the training data, initially the features extracted from the coatings constitute a matrix of 110 columns. We check for linear dependence in the data to avoid collinearity problems. And we reduced the predictor's properties, called also features, to less than half of the original size. This feature reduction was done selecting the features that contribute most to the prediction of the target. We use a clustering algorithm, K-means, to test the discriminative capacity of the coding's features. Notice in the graph the classification of the three groups of samples, low, medium, and high permeability, based on the coatings extracted features. You can see in the x-axis the XRF and in the y-axis the RGB features. Although there is a partial overlap, the three groups are fairly recognized. As you can see in the confusion matrix, it was found as 75% of good classifications for the group low and 100% of good classifications for the group high and medium. If with these features we are able to separate the group of the dataset which are grouped by its permeability and porosity, it is believed porosity and permeability can be predicted with these features. To build a model, we use the library scikit-learn from Python. And to test the performance of the model, the leaf one out cross-validation method was used. With this method, we left one data point out of the training data and then, after training the model, we check the prediction on the point left out. The metric used to evaluate the prediction accuracy was the mean absolute percentage error. AT is the actual value and FT is the forecast value. As a first approximation, we compare three linear algorithms the a super vector machine, the rich regressor and the lesser regressor, and also the k nearest neighbor to predict the porosity. 
In the graph, you can see the comparison of the algorithm's performance versus the number of features selected for training. Notice the convergence of three of the algorithms to a lower error using six of the features. There is also a tendency of the models to increase the error after using 26 features. Although lower error are shown with the rich regressor, the second with the best performance was the KNN, and it seems to be more robust with the different number of features. With KNN, KNN algorithms and six features for a general model, and by general model I mean including all the data that we have in our data set, uh, we can achieve a mean absolute percentage error of 27% in the porosity prediction. Then, we developed a tailored model for each of the Samsung's group in our dataset. Lowest error are also given with the KNN algorithm for the height and medium probability group, uh, achieving 13 and 17% the error. But for the low permeability group, there is still a higher error. Here we are comparing the porosity distribution obtained from plugs, the red one, and the porosity distribution obtained from cuttings in the cross-validation with the KNN algorithm. Even if we have more than 20% error in the prediction with the general model, this tells us that with the predicted values, it is maintained the statistical representativeness of the porosity. To follow the discussion of the previous slide, I wanted to show you a work done in Repsol Technology Lab one year ago about the rock physics measurements representability. What they did was to take a core of a very homogeneous material take one plug and measure the permeability in one point, so they obtain a scalar. Then they took the core and did 300 point measurements alone in the core, obtaining the permeability distribution in which was contained also the plug measurement value. Then they wanted to check the capabilities of estimating their properties with the digital rock physics and in 20 points uh, they also obtain with 20 points they also obtain a distribution bounded within the core distribution so if in reservoir characterization we aim to describe the reservoir behavior it is better to do it with a probability density function or a range of property than with one scalar Regarding the model, we went one step further and tried using other nonlinear algorithms as the gradient boosting, showing the blue line. Also, as we observed that the error could decrease doing tailored model for each group, other features as the distance to the centroids of the different groups were added, improving the model performance. So we obtained a general model to estimate the porosity of clean sandstones with different permeabilities with a 70% of mean absolute error. What does this 70% error mean? It means that if the porosity measured in one plug is 9.8%, we could be predicting a porosity of 11.5%, or a porosity measure as 18% can be predicted as 21%. So the question that we have to do to ourselves is, does this difference really impact in the development of the reservoir static modeling or in the history machine of the reservoir engineers? We believe that with this approach, we can reduce petrophysical uncertainty by increasing the information on a special property distribution using previously disregarded coating material. The multiphysics data features extracted from drill coatings can be obtained in short times. 
So this proposed methodological approach could allow to obtain relevant petrophysical information on site. We are planning to apply this approach also to estimate another properties as rock mechanics, for instance, the elastic modulus. And we also plan to obtain other features from coatings to develop more accurate models. However, these properties are not as easy and fast to extract as they use with the, this presented approach. Thank you very much for your attention and if you have any question or comment to the work to this work, you can write to me on the project developer or to Miguel Caja who is the project manager or even Carlos Santos that is the technical leader. Thank you.